Hello everyone, and thank you for your invitation to the International Conference on Traditional Buildings. This is M. Hassan Jiroudi, and I'll be speaking to you about the design and construction of Al Jalil Mosque in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. The Arab Islamic world is a place of collective crafts and building traditions celebrated worldwide for its rich and ancient urban fabrics. The age-old notion of using naturally occurring or locally made materials to construct load-bearing monuments is an art of noble nature, timeless and deeply rooted in place. While traditional practice is almost disappearing from the, that part of the world, the environmental, social, and economic advantages of using such an approach seems too overwhelming to be ignored by the contemporary building industry. The Hejaz region, the western province of Saudi Arabia, houses the sites of the two holy mosques at Mecca and Medina. Throughout the history of Islam, numerous pilgrims from all over the world visit each year as part of the Hajj and Umrah rituals. Although many leave back home, few decided to stay. As a result, each new settling group brought their own culture and building techniques and assimilated it into the architectural character of the region. For once an influence is absorbed into the rich multicultural fabric of Hijaz, it becomes distinctly Hijazi. Such a unique perennial pattern has made the area a microcosm of the Islamic world and one of the most versatile across the Islamic built environment. The tradition of Ottoman architecture, among many others, was common in the region prior to the invasion of modern architecture and planning. Such language can still be traced today in what remains of the Ottoman work at the two holy mosques of Mecca and Medina. In early 2011, I was invited to design a Jalil Friday Mosque at the northern expansion of Jeddah, the historical port city of Hijaz region on the Red Sea. The project consultant, Muhammad Osama Al-Kabbani, who was also the representative of the mosque benefactor, favored a central dome structure a celebrated Byzantium and later Ottoman model for its grandness and uninterrupted internal openness. Instead, and after months of research and through the gradual design process, I was able to propose a fresh geometrically based refinement of the 16th century Paila Pasha Mosque in Istanbul. A six dome hypostyle hall resting on two pillars that can accommodate 800 worshippers with a smaller hall at the back for 200 female congregates, separating the two halls by a vaulted gallery. Thus, allowing all spaces along with the adjacent service buildings, such as the Imam and Muazzin houses, in addition to the evolution area, to be entirely accessed from the ground floor. The frontal mihrab dome, where the Imam leads the prayers and delivers the Friday sermon, was raised above the adjacent domes to indicate the direction of Mecca from the outside, facilitate the internal gathering, and enhance the acoustic quality of the hall. Furthermore, two minarets are placed to, ident to identify the location of the mosque within its large residential catchment. Eventually, we came to the decision that the six-bay proposal was a suitable model 
that better fits the sites and achieves the mosque's collective purpose. The project was conceived from the start as a low bailing structure, using local bricks for the walls and the curved ceiling, providing all the necessary structural and mechanical details for construction. However, the real challenge was to be able to win the hearts and minds of the engineering team. Before construction, and despite the benefits of using bricks, as well as its intrinsic relation with traditional forms, they were advising the use of reinforced concretes for all shapes and structural elements, except for Mr. Okabani, whom without his trust and support in the design, the building would have never been realized with bricks. But opposition changed into appreciation at sight, with interlocking bricks becoming thick walls, carrying the vaulted ceilings, then rising high and effortlessly closing the domes over the main hall, thanks to Ghazi al Maimani Group, one of the remaining brick suppliers and builders in the Western region for being another significant factor in the successful completion of the work. With the grace of God and the coordinated efforts of the consultant, the builder, and the main contractor, the mosque was completed in July 2013 and opened for the public, becoming a favorite mosque that attracts worshippers from far away areas. It should be said here that traditional art can be superficially perceived as a passionate propagation of the past, to a degree that one might think it is almost trapped in history. But for the dedicated few, it maintains a long chain of accumulated knowledge and divine aspiration. It is an intimate relation with the cycles of the physical world and its metaphysical connotations. A delicate balance between the limitations and the inherent possibilities of resources, showing how matter can manifest meaning of the highest order once the sacred is at the center of the human intellect. Islam, as a building tradition, has started from a specific place as a continuation of an old inheritance through assimilation, modification, and negation of former archetypes based on its particular worldview. Within its spiritual unity, pre-modern pre mosque architecture has expressed a vast variety of formal types and local styles from the early periods of Islam and across its wide geographic spread. Nevertheless, it always tended to express the essence of place, its landscape, materials, local culture, and history. Adhering to a principle that seems intuitive and worth perpetuating, regardless of the age. Thank you very much.